What's up everybody? Today I'm going to review one of my students at NL50. He was kind enough to present some footage with me. So it's three tables of zoom as well as the replayer. It's going to be a fun one. And since our student always has a big mouth in the Twitch chat, we're going to be extra hard on him today. So let's see. So it's NL50 on PokerStars. As I said before, We've got a really good avatar game going on right here with Mr. Garrison and Mr. Slave. Don't think I need to comment on the Jack Deuce. So Ace-9 suited is pretty close. As in, you know, 3-betting is quite loose and you would hate to get 4-bet at the same time. Versus a 40-50% to 50 opening range, you're still quite far ahead. So it's a mix of call and 3-bet. Now, if you believe that your opponent is a very loose player, you, you have to three bet him a bit more, right? If you believe he's very tight, then you can be a bit more call happy with this hand. Ten seven off is a very easy fold, especially with the high rake. So because the rake's quite high, you have to defend a little bit tighter in the big blind. And we do decide to 3 bet with Ace-9, which uh, suited, which seems absolutely fine. We're going for the hipster opening size, 2.96. I would expect that most players in this pool play too tight, so you can open a few more hands in a small blind. So we see here at 6-7, I mean 6-7 would be, it would be quite loose. I think as a standard you want to fold, as we see there's no stats on this opponent, so we don't know whether he's very loose or very aggressive, or the opposite, so as a standard I would fold. And fours as well, it feels tight but we just gotta let it go. Meanwhile you can open every suited ace under the gun, at least in a, in a decent lineup. If people are very very aggressive you can definitely start folding the weakest ones like ace deuce, ace six. Got two premiums on the button. Um, you probably want to play three better fold here because as I said the rake's just too high. Now if there's a gigantic fish in the big blind, by all means go ahead and call, right? Imagine that Retchi, I mean Retchi may be a great player, but I, I don't know him. But let's say he just squeezes 40%. He just squeezes 10 on off and calls four bets. I mean I've seen that type of stuff at 10k, 20k before. Uh, if that happens, yeah, call and hope he squeezes and then reshove, right? Or, or back raise. But... In a standard lineup, just go ahead and 3-bet your pocket queens here. And obviously, pocket kings are an e easy open raise. I'm fine with 2.5. Definitely not larger than that. If anything, I prefer a smaller sizing. And ace-10 is pretty close, but I think you can open raise. So it looks like we're going to make a tight fold here. So let's look at this lineup. I don't know what the tags mean, but if you believe Najim is, for instance, a very good player, and the other players are quite good as well, then being a bit tight makes sense. But ace-10 is a standard open. And we get this ace-jack-7 board. Um, yellow, I do believe, I think it said recreational. So, okay. So, ace-jack-7 is, a, yeah, it's an interesting board, right? Because villain could definitely have jacks. He could have seven. Maybe ace-jack suited. He could still have ace-queen, ace-king. So, it's a pretty draw-heavy board. And you could employ a mixed strategy if you want. Queens would be usually C bet, as in we need a little bit more protection than we do with pocket kings, right? And also we block ace queen, which is a bit more relevant than blocking ace king. Although most recreational players don't four bet ace king super aggressively. I mean, we are button versus under the gun after all. So if we bet, I mean, I would like to see a, see a small C bet here, but it's definitely a spot in which we could mix it up. We could check back some weaker aces, even some medium aces or pocket aces. We can check back some in like kings. And if we've got absolutely nothing, like we've got five, six clubs, we can also check behind to see a free card because we can't really expect that many folds, right? If villain is mostly calling big cards here and big and big suited and suited hands, we can't really expect him to fold much against the third pot. It also really depends on how loose you believe he is. So I'm seeing, let's let's uh, let's dissect this HUD. So I'm seeing fifty six twenty, but I don't think that's the V pip. Cbet P. I have absolutely no idea what his uh, VPIP is based on this uh, this HUD, but he's a recreational player. So, oh, okay, we see he right there. He was playing eighteen thirteen. It seems that's very very tight. So, if if an eighteen thirteen player calls a three bet out of position under the gun, 
he's gonna have a good hand, right? Which means a board like this is not fantastic for you. So I don't mind a small C bet, but I also really wouldn't mind seeing you check behind. And so he calls very, very quickly, saying he's got something that's not really worth check raising. At the same time, there's no doubt in his mind that he can check call. Maybe he called fast with like a slightly weaker hand to pretend to be strong. That's something you'll see quite a bit. So I would advise all of you to just have consistent timing, right? So take a few seconds, think through the hand, and don't like call fast with a weak hand, shove, like raise fast with a good hand, and you know, whatever. And think about it when you've got like pocket tens or you know, jack 10 suited, right? So be consistent. Uh, the eight is definitely a card in which you want to check back. We now lose to 10, nine, maybe pocket eight, seven, eight. So no value whatsoever. Easy check. Jack eight, we can open the raise. And so on this turn, again, I would check back some strong hands here. Like we could check back a hand like aces again or hand like ace queen, that type of stuff. We could even have a seven to check behind. So it's unlikely we have a seven, but it's possible, right? Like an occasional seven, eight bottom two pair, seven, six suited. And we're hoping that the villain checks. If he does bet... I would probably fold. I mean, he's playing 18 VPIP, so it's not as if he's calling three bets out of position with hands like King Queen offsuit. And we block few, uh, a couple of the uh, the bluffs in his range, like Queen 10 of spades, King Queen of spades. Maybe he floats light with hands like, you know, Queen 10 of, uh, qu like Queen 9 of hearts, but definitely Queen 10 of hearts. So well, our hand is not particularly good for calling. We do unblock uh, things like five, six of spades, but again, does somebody that, that tight really call those hands? Perhaps, but. We can't really count on it, right? Meanwhile, Queen 9 5 is definitely a scary board in the sense that villains should have a lot of straight draws, flush draws, and pairs. So we have to be careful on this board. It's not just one where we can see bet range one third and move on to the next hand. So Jack 8 mostly like to see you check here. And despite playing 18 VPIP, we see a call with Ace 9 suited, which is too uh, which is too light. You know, so if we call ace queen suited or ace king off, or maybe some ace ten ace jack suited, fine. Maybe ace five suited, but ace nine is a little bit too loose, especially with the high rake. Uh, especially given the fact that a lot of villains don't three bet that uh, frequently at an all fifty, ace nine is not a profitable call. So okay, that's good. It means he's calling a little bit light, which means we can be a bit more aggressive in general. Okay, so we know that. So and the result is not that bad, right? We basically bought a showdown for a third of the pot. So the pot's quite, quite small. We we got to realize our equity. We we face a half pot bet with jack eight. Uh, we should check raise quite aggressively on a board like this. There's a lot of flush uh, flush draws out there, straight draws to over cards. However, we've got a gut shot and a backdoor straight draw, I guess, on the low side with no backdoor diamond. So with this hand, generally you just want to check call. I mean, even if you hit a 10, right, you don't have the nuts. So generally want to check all here against a half pot bet. Let's see what our villain, is, uh, our hero decides to do. Okay. Now this ace is, this ace is a fantastic card for you because you cannot expect villain to bet many aces on the flop. At the same time, I think this board is just dry enough to the point where we, we would check all some aces. So let's see if we've got ace king, we'd probably check call, right? Or let's see if we've got a hand like ace nine, we'd probably check call, or ace five, stuff like that, or even ace jack, or ace eight with, with, dim with a diamond, or multiple diamonds. This ace is uh, pretty good for us. So you could make it very advanced and start leading on this card for a small sizing, but you checking your whole range is definitely the standard play. Uh, that's a very advanced play I wouldn't really recommend, as in, there's some upside to doing that. At the same time, it's a very difficult strategy uh, to implement. So it's it's like a, you know there's like mod like it's like very high risk, moderate reward. So, and we get an eight river. Um, question is, do we turn our hand into a bluff here? I would say the answer is probably no. Diamond Smith that we could bluff with. We have some hands like King Jack King Ten that uh, we could bluff with. Um, perhaps we have a hand like pocket sixes or a five that we could bluff with. So we don't need to bluff a hand like this. Now, check raising would be a, a pretty cool play as a bluff, but let's hope a villain just gets us to show it out. If he checks behind, we probably lose, but 
There's so many other hands we can bluff first. 9-6, easy open raise. And he mucks pretty quickly. So when he mucks quickly, it tells me he probably has some kind of marginal showdown value here. I mean, the 8 is a pretty good card for his range, so he'd at least think about, you know, he at least think about bluffing, right? Imagine he has a hand like, you know, like King-10. He would at least think about bluffing. Anyway, so pocket 9s here is quite close. It's an awkward spot, right? If we had 8s, we probably wouldn't uh, squeeze. If we had 10s, we we'd almost for sure would. So 9s is right in the middle. If these if these opponents are very loose, it's more of a squeeze. If they're very tight, it's not as much of a squeeze. So, yeah, it really depends on how tight you believe your opponents are. So, yellow does mean recreational, so I'm expecting this flat call on the button to be a little bit on the weaker side. I do not know what purple means. I would like to see a squeeze here. It does take a little bit more pull swap skill in order to plan like nines uh, in a 3 by pot out of position, potentially, but there's just a lot of value. You just want to squeeze here, get value, get this hand heads up. So the button shouldn't really be ahead of you very often because he should 3 by 10s plus quite often. So you only really lose to 8s and, and a really random deuce. King Jack we can isolate. 3.5x uh, is fine, 4 is fine as well. It depends. If you believe he's just crazy calling King Deuce offsuit out of position, go ahead and make it any size you want, right? But without any information, 3.5 is my sizing, 4 is absolutely fine. All right, gets checked through, and we see this ten turn. Uh, this ten is, I mean, it's a it's a decent card for uh, for everybody, I guess. Cease is gonna open them, but if he has a C bet range, he's gonna C bet some hands like Jack ten and whatever. Um, and and Baku can have a couple of tens, so mm, it's pretty close. I'll probably check here. <clears throat> if you if you bet out here and you get raised, that would be a disaster, especially blocking some of the semi bluffs like. Ace nine of clubs, jack nine of clubs, etc. So, yeah, probably end up checking here. It's just important that you also check some really good hands, right? So let's say you defended ace two suited. It would be pretty cool if you check here and check raise sometimes. With queen eight, I mean, I assume we, yeah, we just happily saw, saw the flop. There's no reason to really raise here with queen three as a bluff unless you know your opponents are going to limp fold a lot. But that's very difficult to know. And we see that Mr. Bean leads out for half pot. Uh, well, more like two-thirds pot, actually. So I'd like to see, uh, see a call here with, ace, with, uh, with queen three. There's no value in raising. You don't need a whole lot of protection. It would be a disaster if you get, uh, get three bet. Meanwhile, with king jack, we flop pretty poorly. 6-5-4 is not a good board. Villain could easily limp call hands like king six suited or pocket sixes, pocket fives. He could also just have ace high and still has beat. So I don't really mind this check behind. The eight is also not a great card for us because if we had in like seven, eight, nine, eight, we may have bet. And villain definitely has more sevens in his range. So I don't mind if you just check behind again. And once again, the 9 is not great, right? If we had like 10-9 suited and we check behind the flop, we we might have taken a stab on the turn, given the fact that we have two overcards and a gut shot. So it's not a it's not a good run out for us. We're basically hoping to beat a hand like Queen-10, King-Deuce or something like that, or like a really bad hand like Jack-3 suited. So... So we see another queen, which is uh, which is pretty sweet, and villain bets a little bit over half pot. So I would end up just calling here. I mean, you don't really beat any other queens except for exact exactly queen deuce, and if villain is nine eight, he has significantly less equity right now. We called with queen three against a little bit over half pot, and the five is definitely not a great card because nine eight does get there. At the same time, maybe villain has like an overplayed pair. He could still have some bluffs like 10-9, 10-8. Maybe he turns a hand like 5-4 into a bluff or hand like 8-5. And who knows, right? I mean, he could just have king deuce offsuit and just have a ridiculous hand to be bluffing with. So if villain bets a, a reasonable sizing, I would definitely end up uh, I would definitely end up just calling. If he bets really small, we might end up raising. 
So he bets two thirds pot, then he bets like half pot. And now he checks, right? So he, I'm not sure what he's representing. He could have like a seven or a five. I wouldn't mind if he just bet small here. I honestly think he's going to check full almost every time against this bet. I mean, I don't. If he had a queen, I think he usually keeps on betting. So he was either bluffing or he made a thin value bet with a seven or a six. So I don't think he's going to call you much, to be honest. Whoa, okay. So this is very surprising, right? This is something that at lower stakes you don't really see. Uh, generally, your opponents are a little bit more face up and passive. Uh, they're not very creative. So Villain actually decided to check raise here when the draw got there. And I mean, in theory, this would be a call in the sense, I mean, you have a queen um, and you're facing a small bet, a small raise. But I would say that when most villains do this type of stuff, you should just fold, right? So, I mean, if I had this, if I had this hand somehow at high stakes, I'll probably end up calling against a good opponent. I mean, we're getting great odds. We have a good hand. Folding would definitely be exploitative. However, I would say when people, would ch especially check min raise almost, right? As in, you can easily have so many queens or even 9-8 and you bet and then into, like, he knows you're strong and then you just check min raises. It just really looks like he's got it, right? It just really looks like he had 9-8. He's hoping that you have a queen and bet, and that he and then he check raises, or he just filled up with queen five suited, and now he he just wants to get some value. So, I think we can actually make a very tight fold. If we had a hand like queen eight, queen nine, it would be a bit better, right? Because at least we blocked the straight as well. But it would be quite ambitious for him to have a hand like six seven lead out, merge bet the turn, and then check raise the river as a bluff. Is it possible? Absolutely, right? I, again, he could have like king deuce offsuit, but. Do, do you see this enough at NL50? I've reviewed quite a few hands at NL50 in my life, and I don't really see... I haven't really seen many bluffs like these. So, I think we can actually... Uh, I think we can actually make the tight fold. And I see a comment that we block 3-4. Yes, we technically do, but I don't think it's so, uh, super relevant. So, let's see if you're good at uh, folding against potential nits. Meanwhile, Jack-4, easy fold, and... Ace 10 easy 3 bet. Shoving all in is very ambitious and unnecessary. Okay, I actually really like it. This shows good discipline. As I said, this hand is not a fold, and if you were to somehow plug this into a solver in a three way limp pot, but uh, in, in practice, I think we can make a tight fold. So nice. Shows uh, It sh shows good discipline for sure. Now, had we bet like third pot, maybe the guy could have leveled himself. Uh, you know, or he may he may just attack that small sizing, but we also bet a little bit larger on the river, so yeah, I don't think we need to call. Well, aces don't have to tell you what to do. I would open it a little bit smaller, but two point five is fine. High pace today, guys. A lot of hands to go through. So, so far, our hero is playing quite well, actually. Assuming he threw us these pocket tens. Nines was like a, you know, it was, it was a, it was a tight play, it was fine. Not three betting tens would be, uh, would definitely be a mistake. And so if you were to get four bet tens would generally be a call. Again, if your opponents are extremely nitty, maybe you can find a fold, but, you know, this would be nowhere near fold in theory. Just easy call. If you believe your opponent is really aggressive, just four betting way too much. Then you could go ahead and, and, and shove, right? For like value and protection. Tens is obviously not the greatest hand to play out of position in a four by pot. Because there's so many bad cards that can hit. Uh, A7, we could have maybe three bet against the right opponent. But I guess a standard opponent, we just end up folding. I mean, our opponent was a raising under the gun, right? Okay, so we saw right here. Let's go back just a sec. Whenever you see somebody who doesn't have a full stack, you can assume he's not a professional with about 90% certainty. So we get 3-bet here, and it's kind of close, right? The 3-bet is not really large. At the same time, ace-9 is a little bit dominated. If you believe your opponent is very aggressive, okay, you can end up calling, maybe even 4-bet. But as a standard fold is, uh, fold is fine. I would imagine that the average 3-bet frequency in, the, in, in this pool is about 7-8%. 
rather than about 10% at higher stakes. So yeah, calling three bets super light, given the fact that people are quite tight as well as you, uh, you paying a lot of rake, isn't recommended. I would definitely play tight against three bets. Ace three would be a loose open, but I don't hate it. You can play a pretty loose, uh, loose aggressive priest flop style here. And of course you get punished right away. So here we see a three bet to 7.8, which is a fine sizing. Uh, I would like to see a four bet bluff here. So as I said, you're calling a three bet potentially out of position with a dominated ace with high rake against a nitty player. I, I would end up uh, four betting here. So calling, so this is the t the perfect type of hand where at higher stakes calling sometimes would be, be a bit better, but here four betting would just be the best play. I'd also like to see you look at his three bet, his v pip, etc. So twenty three nineteen. I mean, you see right here. 5% 3 bet, right? Now it's only 176 hands, so we can't say that with great certainty, but that's almost, I mean, that's almost nothing, right? So maybe in real reality, again, he's got 7 or 8% 3 bet, but that's not so, that's not so, so aggressive. So we have to be careful here. I'd like to see a 4 bet bluff still. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. I mean, it seems tempting, right? You're opening 25 to 30 percent on the cutoff, and if you let go of Ace 10 suited, you're definitely folding quite a bit. I mean, it's one of the better hands you're opening with, but this hand just doesn't play great against a very tight range. Villain is gonna have so many hands like Ace Queen Ace King that just destroy you. So I'd rather see you four bet or even fold. Again, it seems tight, but we're paying about eight big blinds rake, I believe. So that's a lot of rake to pay. And so, yeah, you see a lot of, I mean, now we've got like a backdoor flush draw. We've got two over cards. Can we do something perhaps, but probably not. Villainous, villainous thinking. Uh, queen deuce with low rake, I would call with high rake. I think we should fold. If, we, if it were like 2.2, I would call. I like to fold. And Villain tanks for a very long time and their bet's very large, so he probably has a hand like Pocket Jacks and he's just thinking, well, if I get check raised, am I willing to go with my hand? Probably yes, fuck it, I'm just gonna bet. Anything but, if, but a fold would be a mistake. Alright, we'll do a couple more hands and we get to some questions. I love the I love uh, love the fact there's almost 200 people in the chat already. Appreciate it, guys. But I said we want 250, 250. So we see this 3.2x raise. I mean, okay, fine. We're just gonna three bet anyway, unless again one uh, you know unless somebody behind you is absolutely insane. King seven easy fold, and 83 is an interesting board. You know, some people range bet here, some people do not. The 8 is definitely a better card for your opponent than it is for you. I mean, he's defending hands like 8-5 suited, right? But you're never opening 8-5 suited. So, I mean, at the same time, you know, you're going to have some hands like 8-7 suited. He'll might maybe sometimes 3 bet him. It's not a terrible board, right? The 3 doesn't really matter. There's no flush out there. So, I would say uh, in, a, in a passive player pool, you can see bet range here. Because if you were to see bet range, your opponent would have to check raise like 30% of the time. And I suspect that he doesn't really check raise more than 10%. Maybe 15 max, but since they're very passive with check raising, I want you to push these guys around a bit. So generally, guys, when you play low stakes, pushing people around is the best way to make pushing people around is the best way to make money. As in, they're often quite tight and scared and very careful. So you have to be the opposite. If I play this game, and actually this month for uh, releasing a new lab video of me playing NL50 actually so funny coincidence and you'll be seeing me play like an absolute maniac so if you play NL50 or NL20 maybe NL25 or even NL100 you should play like a maniac I'm not saying that you should do blindly do stupid things right but you should be a little bit overly aggressive unfortunately I don't have the luxury of almost uh, of always doing that type of stuff because you know my opponents are quite good 
right? I can't really afford to make, uh, you know, I can't really afford to monkey around much. Uh, King 7, I would say, is definitely too loose. Now, if you're paying, like, no rake at all, okay, but it, it is too loose, right? We're, again, we're paying a big blunt's rake, right? So you have to, uh, you have to adjust to that. So even if your chart tells you King 7 off would be a call, remember the rake. We check behind on 8.83. As I said, I think betting range would be a little bit better. And our opponent leads out quite large, quite quickly. Uh, this is kind of the issue with a mixed strategy, right? You have to really mix it up. So you have to check back an 8 sometimes, and a 3, and pocket aces, and ace king, and obviously checks back with nothing. It's quite close. I mean, the problem is that if he bets quite large on the turn, he's going to bet quite large on the river as well, usually. So he, he's going to put you on a lot of hands like ace high, and then think, well, if I bomb it, he'll fold. Actually, feel it feels quite bluff heavy, but it is tough, right? If you only check behind ace high, you you can't really do anything because your opponent is just going to go crazy. So I would say uh, it's super close to be honest. I think the the main problem starts with not betting range, right? Because I think you probably don't check behind the balance range that can actually fight back against this a big bet. Meanwhile, with king seven. 9-3 deuce is another board that villain can just bet 100% on. If you were to plug this in a solver, it will tell you to bet like 90% of the time. So for the sake of convenience, simplicity, and efficiency, effectiveness, whatever term you want to apply to this spot, I, I think betting range is the best play. And now we, we have king seven. I mean, you know, we could bet so we can bluff on the six of diamonds and some uh, clubs or something, you know, fancy like that, but... I mean, checking is probably the best play. I don't see my, I, I don't see your opponent falling ace high here, so he would maybe fall ahead like king jack. And we we get it let into for about sixty percent pot by Rob. Um, and I would definitely like to see you just raise here. Generally, when recreational players lead out, they've just got something. So, can you have a sad and repeat or some kind of funny nine six suited? Sure. But he's still going to get it in with hands like a 9 or pocket 10s and jacks and flush draws and straight draws. So I would definitely like to see a raise here and happily call an all-in. And so with King 7, right? I mean, it wouldn't even be the worst play to go for some really big overbet or some really big check raise in order to get him off an ace. If you just bet 3 quarters here, he's obviously never folding an ace. Well, on the river, I mean, if Villain were bluffing within like 10-9, he got there. If he had a flush, he gets there. Although I'm not sure he would bet $10 or 10 blinds into 12. So you basically have to hope he's betting here with hand like, you know, Queen Jack. So again, the problem kind of starts on the flop. And Rob calls. Once he calls, you have to imagine you have the best hand like 95% of the time. And when he shoves now, it really looks like he's got some kind of pocket tens type of hand. And he just doesn't want to see another card, right? Or he's got a draw and he just open shove. But I'm guessing it's a hand like tens or jacks a lot. <laughs> I I was I was slightly off, I have to admit. Okay. If I were you, uh, I would just turn off the. Uh, the option for a, for a cash out because it just saves time and I'm sure eventually you'll misclick and actually get insurance <laughs> yes people said poker is dead no money to be made everybody plays the GTO according to Tim Stone everybody plays perfect GTO Would be pretty sick if you have ace-king of hearts there, and he holds. Would have been a perfect value bet. 6-4, easy fold. Eight four, uh, 8 4 suited, I definitely like to see you fold as well. Yeah, I like it. All right, guys, let's do a uh, let's do a couple of rounds of questions, and we will continue with the footage eventually. Don't worry about that, so don't leave just yet. Let me scroll up. Let's see. Uh, 
Am I gonna get try to get unbanned from GG? Uh, that I tried that a lot. I tried that uh, a few times, but no, that didn't work. Royal flush. I know this guy Callboy. Do you know he's a simp? I do not know what a simp is. Let me Google that. Sim is a slang on insult for men seen as too attentive and submissive to women, especially out of failed hope of winning some entitled sexual something. So like a male feminist, basically. Uh, I did not know that uh, that our hero was a male feminist. I I, and I sincerely doubt he is. From the, I mean, I admit I don't know too much about him. Obviously, I've never met him, but I would highly doubt he is, because he always has the biggest mouth on Twitch. So I really doubt he is. Why do you want your students to play Zoom? I never said that, uh, ZZ. So, our students can play whatever they want, right? If they want to play 200, 400, they can go ahead and do so. So, we advise them. So, basically, we we uh, offer them sites with the, uh, the with the softest games. And usually, that is definitely not Poker Stars, right? And we, tell, we say, hey, we think you would uh, make the most amount of money given your situation on this side in this game. But if people say I prefer playing uh, play I prefer to play Zoom 50 in this case that's that's fine right we don't we don't force you to range bet 883 we tell you based on what we know about the game and about our opponents etc we believe that C betting range in this spot against this opponent is best we don't tell you to C bet range we say we you may play this game because it's a better game we don't tell you to do anything right other than being an honest stand up guy. We don't ask you to do anything. I'll obviously be a hard worker. Will this be on YouTube or in the lab? No, this will be a YouTube video in a few weeks, uh, Proker. It would kind of be weird to like have a free session and then put it in the lab, which is, uh, you know, which you would have to pay for. That would be kind of unfair to uh, to paying members, right? No, so that, that, that will not be happening. Well, this will be on YouTube for free. Who's the best player these days? Aruba, give me up. Yasem Gale. Um... I honestly do not know. I honestly do not know. So, I think there's like probably like five, ten guys who are basically evenly skilled. Maybe like five plus guys. So, yeah. Zuruba hasn't played much lately. Give me a play some. Yasam Gale, I don't see that often anymore. So, you know, you have got other guys like Big Blind Bat shows up sometimes. Make Boyfriend. He plays a little bit more. Um,. Yeah, you have just a bunch of guys who are just doing a good job, right? But nobody really stands out. But a few years ago, Linus really stood out as the best. Before then, OTB stood out as the best. Nobody really stands out. Do you think... Do you drink tequila and listen to mariachi? I do not, Twy Cool Day. All right. <coughs> Hey MMA, I'm playing Anno 25 for a month now. I moved up pretty quickly and I think I'm a winning player, therefore considering taking poker seriously. I'm willing to put in 70 plus hours a week into poker. What would you say are the chances of me getting accepted into the CFP? <clears throat> if you are indeed if you are indeed willing to play 70 or like put in 70 hours of poker and you're playing Anno 25 and uh, you're not hiding anything that would lead us to not want to uh, accept you, then the chances would be over 90%. Right, because I mean, so the fact that you play NL25 doesn't matter, right? As in, we don't just accept guys who play high stakes. So NL25 is perfectly acceptable. You'll start off in the low stakes group, I assume. Uh, I mean, of course, it depends, right? Probably you'll start off in the low stakes group. And if you if you take it serious, like if you're an honest, stand up, hardworking guy, um, willing to make it, willing to you know really push himself, then you're absolutely welcome. So. At the same time, if you say, hey, I'll play on all 400, right? So a very advanced player, but I want to play 2,000 hands a month and go to the strip club uh, three times a day. Then we say, well, this is not for you. You know, you can go to the strip club as many times as you want, but you can't play 2,000 hands and, you know, try and become a professional. That's not how it works, right? I mean, if you if you play 2,000 hands as an up-and-comer, what are you going to do when you finally have made a little bit of money, right? So, no. 70 plus hours a week. Uh, to be fair, um, it... You know, you're not the first guy who said, "Oh, I want to play 100,000 hands a month or whatever," and then ne 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 never ends up happening. So I'm not accusing you, of course, uh, of that. Of course, people tend to play less than they claim they will. But if you were to play 50 hours a week or something, or let's say 40 hours a week and 10 hours of studying or coaching, whatever, 
that would be really yeah uh, that would be great already so yeah um if you're interested i would sign up on the on bluff to spot.com sorry bluff to spot uh yeah dot com i'll send you a link in a second so you can just sign up and just basically excuse me you can send an application form and uh form and we just get provide a little bit of information about yourself and obviously that doesn't mean you're attached to anything we just we just have a talk and see if we can make things work all right so one second copy paste boom there it is so bluffthespot.com slash cfp uh if you want to be a student thank you was all tfc good um i only played with him a handful of times like a few hands um uh, yeah back then like 10 years ago yeah he was definitely one of the best Good job with the design of Twitch. Um, well, no credit to me. It was all, uh, you know, the Bluff the Spot guys who did that. But yeah, I, I agree. It looks, uh, it looks quite a bit better, right? Only thing I'm not seeing is any chat. So that, that's the one thing we could improve. So, but yeah, we'll do that next time. Let's see. Wish I had a CFP deal for that CFP library. That's where, that's one of the perks, uh, WXR Lord. So if you're a member of the CFP, I mean, we, we have many, many group coachings every single week. We edit them a bit and we put them on the website. So even if that week you're not getting coached, you can watch our content, right? So maybe you want to approve on whatever, blind versus blind and three by pots. I'm sure there will be five videos out on blind versus blind and three by pots. So you can just watch it. Uh, there will be several students asking questions and they'll probably have the same questions you did. And then you basically get a, a coaching session, right? Except that it doesn't count. So yeah, we have a very large library with up-to-date videos. Obviously, you know, the oldest ones we will eventually remove because, I mean, they'll still be good videos, but at a certain point, we'll just have so much good and uh, newer content. So yeah, that's one of the perks. You, you get access to a ton of videos. <clears throat> Let's see, yellow is fish, light blue is rag. Okay, so there's exactly two regs in here. And pink is Mongo. Okay. So I assume that means Mongo, like retard or crazy, crazy reg. <clears throat> MMA, can you blast this game stronger? I'm waiting only for that. I'll do my best, Kinky. Let's see. Your voice is coming out very loud. Okay. I don't have a problem with it being quite loud because you can just turn on the volume, right? It would be worse if it, if it were too uh, too quiet. Let's see, just scrolling through the, the comments, guys. We'll resume in a minute. Just jo what just joins what happened in that queen three hand. We uh, Hero actually made a tight fold. How are you letting your student play Zoom? Well, I mean, as I said, we advise people where, where we think they can make the most money, right? But we don't tell them what to do. So, I mean, that's up to them. They're all adults. Would you fold this and suit it mainly in EP versus cut off button at these stakes? Um, I would probably four bet or fold this hand in virtually, in virtually every spot, Albin. Maybe, uh, maybe blind versus blind, not so much. But also, remember, that guy played 5% 3-bet, right? That's quite tight. People are saying Poker Stars is rigged. Um, Poker Stars is many things, but I do not believe it's rigged. Will GSP accept Habib and who wins? Well, GSP is almost 40 years old and he hasn't fought seriously in 7 years or something. I mean, he came back once to be the easier opponent. So, no, I don't think they would win. Uh, I, I, I don't want to see that fight because, I mean, first the GSP is, uh, is bigger. At the same time, he's almost 40 years old and he hasn't really fought, right? So I don't want to see that fight because, you know, whoever wins, I mean, that doesn't really represent who is the better fighter or the greater fighter overall. Let's see... Let's see. Limitless said on Polish TV show yesterday that he's the best no limit heads up player in the world. You said he's a humble guy. Uh, or is his confidence? Uh, could be many things. <laughs> it's actually funny. Um, 
a few days ago, I was chatting with Limitless, and he actually, and he said, like, hey, why do you always give me a 7 on stream or on your in your YouTube videos? Why don't I get a 10? And I said, all right, we're going to review some of your best plays, and you're going to get a 10. So there's a bit of pressure. I then tried to invite him to join us on stream, but he he unfortunately said no. But shout out to Limitless. He's a, he's a great guy and a great player for sure. Definitely a fun one to watch. What is the minimum stake you must be playing for before applying? I believe it's NL5 and NT, so you would enter the micro stakes group. And in NL2, you'd have to practice a bit more, but in NL5, uh, you're welcome. Opinion on Jinch Poker. Um, I, last year, I was playing in Vegas, and um, I sat down, like a guy sat next to me, like a pretty big guy. He was, he was Ginger, and somebody said, hey, Jinch. And I wasn't really listening. I didn't, I mean, I heard, hey, Jinch, but I didn't know what it meant. And then, like, we just played, right? He didn't really say anything to anybody except for that guy. And 30 minutes later, he, he promptly turns to his left and says, Hey, MMA, nice to meet you. I didn't know it was you. And I was like, oh, who, who are you? And he's, oh, I'm, I'm Ginge. And I already knew, I, I've known Ginge for a few years. So he was the referee once in a, in a prop bet I did with Jason B. So that, that's where I know him from. I know he plays like 100 and 200 some 500 I believe so that was actually I believe like an NL NL10k table so yeah he definitely took a shot there so yeah because, but I know I'm from him refereeing a uh, Jason B prop bet with me so let's see let's say cut off random fish opens three big blinds we're in the big blind the black we're on the button and the big blinds and the blinds are regs what three batch size should we use um I think a sizing of nine would be fine Will Lomachenko beat Lopez? I think he will. Is Phil Azmiz better than Limitless Heads Up? I honestly do not know. I'm not trying to protect an edge or be nice. I mean, Limitless is my buddy. I mean, we're not we're not close buddies or anything, but he's definitely a buddy. He's a great guy. Uh, Phil Azmiz I'm not the biggest fan of, but I honestly don't know. They're both uh, definitely good players, so definitely not guys you would love to sit down against. <laughs> Jimmy recommended in the webinar have one sign for the flop and the turn, but in practical he has an overbet and three quarters on the turn. What do you think about this? Uh, well, it depends on so on once uh, he probably means that on one texture you want one sizing, but it's not as if you only want one size on every single board in in every si single situation. <laughs> How about the Discord's channel for the BTS Plus Lab? We're still working on it, Sig the Joker, but uh, feel free to uh, leave your feedback to us, of course. In the meantime, should you memorize preflop ranges or just a general idea? Um, you should kind of memorize them, but you should be open-minded, Jonathan, and not just say that, uh, you know, you should be able to change your strategy. Any sick Dijon stories? No pussy. Come on, tell us. Um, you'd have to be a bit more specific. I don't have too many Dijon stories, Wildzy. With Z. What's up, Kurt? We are reviewing a student. In fact, let's go review him right now. So, all right, let's continue. A7 would be a little bit too loose to open with. An eight, seven, eight, six offsuit definitely would be. Is it disturbing that Mr. Slave kind of looks like Freddie Mercury? I don't know. Shout out to Freddie Mercury, by the way. I know he's been uh, he's been gone for a while, but he's the best male singer in rock history for sure. Some people might disagree, but I don't care. I'm right. Okay. Anyway, back to Ace King here. We open the button obviously and get f and uh, the small blind flats, and he's got quite a big stack. And now the big blind squeezes. The big blind's going to squeeze a pretty aggressive range here because he knows the the small blind is quite capped. I mean, maybe the small blind has aces or kings sometimes, but. Pretty unlikely. So against this probably like 10% squeeze range or whatever he's got, we can definitely forbid and get this in. We also don't want to call and invite Kieran into the pot. And then with the flops king 4-3 and he has pocket 4s and we lose our whole stack potentially. I would definitely like to see you forbid here. It's button versus the blinds, right? So ranges are quite wide as well. I like it. Uh, I think your sizing is a little bit too large, but uh, I do like the 4-bet. 
He's got Ace King as well. Uh, so you see again like 1917, right? You see very nitty stats. I do think we call it off. Villain is going to shove every single Ace King. He's going to maybe shove Ace Queen suited off suit even sometimes. Maybe some lower pairs, in which case we have the odds to call. Uh, even I mean we 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 have thirty percent against kings and we need thirty six. So even against kings, we're not bleeding money, right? Only against aces we'd be bleeding money. I think we should call. And villain shoved, you know, on the lighter side with tens. Uh, so I mean, we uh, we're in decent shape here. Uh, you see, when a, when one of my students like swirled their, their mouse, it means like I don't know what I'm doing. So all right, let's go back to the jack nine. <clears throat> four three three four four three is a i mean a, we can talk about this board for two hours the four is definitely a little bit better for your opponent than it is for you right because he's going to be defending some hands like maybe like whatever like four do suited but you're not going to open four do suited it's not that bad right it's so low that it's a bit it's kind of irrelevant so this is probably a board in which you'd want to mix it up So villain like absolutely snap calls the flop. That definitely definitely removes some of the nutted hands in his range. Of course he could trap you, but you know, he probably think about it a little bit. I wouldn't hate if you ended up bluffing here. The 10 is not a card that he, villain will hit a ton, right? He'll float some as like ace 10, king 10, but I wouldn't hate if you ended up uh, betting here. And on the seven, I mean, the seven is not a great card. Villain could maybe have five six. He could definitely have seven five seven six. So he improves quite a bit on the seven. He could also, of course, float like a random seven eight of clubs. You know, check behind the turn because he didn't improve and now I've hit the river. So at the, on the other end, we do have jack high. I mean, ten high as a pair. So it's one of the weaker hands in our range, right? If we gave up with a six seven or seven eight, we now have a pair. I'd probably like to see you bluff here. Try to get your opponent to fold like a three. Maybe pocket deuces, maybe ace high, or at least king high, queen high. Yeah, I'd like to see you. Uh, I'd like to see you bluff here. And that's uh, that's the bluff to spot run, the patented bluff to spot run. If you join us, you'll uh, you'll run like that. I can't promise that, so I don't want to get sued, but you'll uh, most likely win a lot of flips. So we end up betting third pot here. I don't hate it, but I think we should bet a bit bigger. <laughs> see that's why queen six easy call and we see the small but like snap calls he doesn't have a full stack i mean this guy may be a recreational player i mean he does have an avatar of three beautiful ladies so maybe he's just maybe it's just dan bolzarian anyway I'd like to see you call here And we see it's a very bit quick bet and a very quick call. Just let it go. Yes, we've got a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. Don't get cute, right? Guys, don't outplay yourself, okay? Just keep it simple at these stakes. Keep it simple. Jack 10 should definitely be opened. I've heard many things about Castellino. I've heard him calling for... I've heard he calls four bits with pocket deuces and flop sets and many other uh, horror stories uh, i know that some of my some of our former students hate this guy so and he immediately shows up in three bets easy fold even i don't know whether or not costalino is too aggressive but even if he is jack 10 we, uh, we just have to fold there's nothing we can do four betting is too aggressive calling is too loose i like it Uh, king 8 suited, you could 3-bet sometimes, but not always. And king jack is kind of ugly, as in there is a mongo in the small blind, as uh, as our hero would say. There's also uh, two yellow players in the pot. So if you believe that Remco, who's probably a Dutch guy, is extremely bad, which I don't know, you could end up 3-betting him here, or at least you could flat call. Um, flat, I mean, it is a little bit on the loose side. If the small blind is very aggressive, you may not want to flat call because he's going to squeeze uh, squeeze you to death. It's kind of close, right? All three options make a bit of sense. So with no information, I'll probably fold because of the high rake. But I definitely could see this being a three bet or a call sometimes. You also see a lot of guys like have very low C bet here. We've seen a lot of checking behind in spots where you may not have to. 
10 4 deuce, you don't have to see bet range if you don't want to, but it's at least a board we can see bet quite frequently. So the Jack is a a pretty good card for us. It's a decent card for him. If Villain not in like, you know, Queen Jack, Jack 9, Jack 8 would usually bet to turn. So I wouldn't hate if you come up with some kind of fancy overbet bluff here, but as a standard, I would just check. And easy fold. Uh, King nine. Since this guy's probably very loose and aggressive, I'd like I'd probably like to see a three bet King nine here for value. Uh, you definitely seem to be missing out on a couple of uh, lighter three bets. And so we get this king here, and we've got a gut shot, I guess. Yeah, I was gonna check. I was checking whether or not we have a gut shot or a double gut shot. We have a single gut shot. Now this ace is a great card for your opponent, right? He's gonna check back hands like ace ten, ace eight, ace jack, some random low aces. So it's not a card in which you wouldn't want to do much leading, if at all. Now we do have the king jack and the jack nine advantage. Because I mean. If we had jack-9, obviously we'd defend pre, right? And we we're going to check the flop. But if he had jack-9, we'd expect our opponent to bet the, bet the flop virtually always. And if he had king-jack, maybe not always, but at least often. So when it comes to straights, we're definitely ahead. And so in theory, with king-high, you really we wouldn't really want to bluff. But at the same time, I don't hate it. I think your bet size is not so great. I think uh, a bigger bet would be even better. Um, 8-6 is kind of close. And you do seem to be pretty liberal with the yellow marker because everybody seems to be yellow. Um, I, I mean, of course, these games are soft, but I don't imagine that every single player in this lineup is a fish, right? So if he indeed is a weaker player uh, and he gave you better odds and calling, that would be okay. But with the rake, I don't hate a fold. Against 3x easy fold. Five is easy open raise, where especially since we're targeting uh, the big blind. And generally, we would be folding to a three bet. Uh, say, okay, so I was gonna. What I was gonna add to that was if villain three bets us in position, so we'd be out of position. Now here, this is actually a great spot, right? Because Villain 3 bet far too small, so we're getting great odds in position. We're quite deep still, 100 big blinds. And we're facing somebody who's a bit weaker, so easy call. Uh, he does seem to be very aggressive, which kind of sucks. It sucks in the sense that he's going to run us over a bit. But, I mean, you say he's very aggressive, but he's playing 18-6-4. I mean, um, to me, that sounds like a super nit. That's great. If he's got a lot of aces and kings to 3 bet, I don't mind flopping a set. And if you don't flop a set, you just let it go. So right here... If he just bets 10, 10 big blinds, just let it go. I get it. We've got a gut shot. It's a nice bluffing hand later streets. Just let it go. Okay, now that he checks. So when he checks, he tells me he has a lot of hands like kings and queens and jacks. Uh, maybe kind of ran of a random stupid hand. Like, you know, he could have like 10-7 suited, right? If he's super aggressive. But he doesn't seem to be. So this hand, in theory, wouldn't be the worst to triple barrel bluff with. As in, we block ace-5 suited. We block ace-4 suited. Uh, we block a 5-4 suited. Sorry, we block 5-3 suited, I guess. But that's not really relevant. But we do block ace-5 suited. We have a gut shot, right? And it's kind of awkward to find random bluffs here. You can find 6-5. You can maybe bluff a king-queen or queen-jack. So this end would be a good end to triple barrel bluff. But against a recreational player who's not going to be folding anytime soon, I don't like it that much. I'm also not a big fan of his check on the flop. So you see a lot of spots. In a lot of spots, people are just missing uh, easy c-bets. So he did quickly fold, okay. Uh, you, you saw, I mean, you saw V add Vo check behind quite quickly here. I wouldn't mind seeing you overbet here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing you overbet. You're gonna defend nine eight off and jack ten off and all the type of stuff. So I'd like to see a nice overbet here. Um, most players tend to check by quite weak and capped ranges, especially lower stakes. So I'd like to see you take advantage and really pressure this guy. As I said before, you want to play like a bit of a maniac in these games. So I'd really like to see a pre uh, I would really like to see big pressure here. 
Yeah, so I, I am... It seems like in the big blind, you're not probing nearly enough. You're doing a lot of uh, double checking and just check folding. And you're not really taking advantage of a lot of these guys checking really weak ranges. So, yeah. So you should be as aggressive as your tw in your Twitch chat, basically. So right here, I mean, as I said, we are going to defend 98 off. We're going to defend 7s and 10-7 suited and jack 10 off suit and jacks and... Uh, sorry, not jacks, but... Uh, ace jack king jack pocket threes maybe even seven three so we have so many good hands on this board and so many high equity draws we can overbet this board quite liberally now because now this happens right now you just have to check fold unless you really want to go crazy and check raise huge but that's a little bit more ambitious uh deuces are kind of close here against half pot so the ladies bet half pot and we're beating a lot of draws, but when when Zatanna's bets half pot, you know, he or she can also have hands like pocket sixes and sevens that we have almost no equity against. Also, every river sucks, right? So I think we should probably call, but it's close. Yeah, so overall, you definitely seem to be a little bit too passive, as in you're not applying enough pressure to your opponents. You're kind of letting them get away with too much. You see a lot of opponents check back very high uh, at very high frequency in the flop, and you're not really punishing them for it. Very easy fold of a seven suited. Do not go ahead and four bet there. That's unnecessary. So the small blind calls uh, after under the gun open raise and the big blind as well. Pocket eights. I mean. You could end up triple barreling here, but it would be a bit too aggressive. So I'd like to see you just check. When the small blind calls against the under the gun, he's going to have maybe ace-king, but definitely it's like ace-queen and nines and king-queen suited. So maybe maybe if it's weaker, maybe weaker hands like ace-jack or ace-ten. But still, hands he's not going to be folding anytime soon. So I'd like to see you just check behind. I love my family. Okay. Well, I love, the, I love this turn. And my family. And Stone is considering it, but he checks and Ikum. Ikum should not bet this board very often, right? It's a board on which we check back quite a strong range. We're going to turn pocket eights and ace eight quite often. So I'd like to see a bet here, obviously. I mean, we have the virtual nuts. The only hand we could lose to is pocket nines, really. I like it. It's time to stand up, guys. And kind of an awkward spot here with Ace-Queen, right? So, Villain 3-bet's a little bit too small, making us want to call or 4-bet, but at the same time, he doesn't have a full stack, right? So, I would definitely have a look at his stats. If he's overly aggressive, I would just end up calling. If he's not aggressive at all, a tight fold would make sense. He does seem to be a recreational player, so you can play a few more hands. So definitely look at his stats and see what he's up to. Okay, unfortunately we have no sample. Uh, against such a small 3-bet, i probably end up calling. Now, do I love calling ace-queen to a 3-bet under the gun small blind usually? No. But versus such a small one, sure. So we're facing a third pot bet, easy call. This is not a board on which uh, raising is much of a thing, right? Because I mean, we don't have aces in our range and it's such a dry board. So seven, six, three is not the greatest board for us because villain can definitely have quite a few pairs. At the same time, we have sets, we have straights, etc. So with ace jack, we just have like a medium strength showdown value hand. Checking behind would be standard. And Villain goes for a pretty clever overbet here. Uh, you still marked him a fish. I mean, Lucas, that sounds like a pretty reggae name, to be honest. Uh, and he overbet, which is a pretty clever play. In fact, a really clever play. So I definitely would not say this guy's a recreational player. He also has a full stack. So yeah, uh, I think you're a little bit ambitious with the uh, with the yellow marks. And facing this third pot bet with ace queen, we just got a call, right? We beat it. We have an ace, we have an open ender. So it, it does look like he's trying to milk you with ace king, but we just got to get milked. Now he checks, we check behind, then he has, he has ace king. 
Oh, well, this is very surprising because, I mean, if he has Ace-King, you wouldn't really expect to bet at all, right? Maybe a small one, maybe a medium one, but definitely not an overbet shove. So this is kind of confusing. So I would I'd, I'd definitely end up folding here. I mean, we can have King-Queen. We can have 8-7. We have eight, can have Ace-Jack. We can have Ace-10. We can have like 10-9 of diamonds, right? We can have maybe like King-Queen of diamonds. So yeah, there's no need for us to call this hand. So yes, we block a straight. Yes, we block the flush. But I mean, I would definitely not call. As for him leaving behind 8% uh, of a big blind, that could have been a misclick. I don't know what that's about. If anything, I would say when a recreational player does it, it's a bit stronger. But I don't have too much confidence in that read. If a reg does this, I don't even think about it. I like the fold. Good discipline in fold. We have plenty of strong hands there, and he doesn't care. He just shipped, so he probably just had it. Probably. In the cutoff here, I would like to see a 3 by ace queen suited for sure. I would not really have a flatting range. If the rake were much lower, you could consider having one. If, let's say, the big blind were a huge fish, you can consider having one. And obviously, this is the dream board, right? So, very small sea bet. Quarter pot is... I mean, third pot is fine. I would go with quarter pot. Ace-10, let's see if you open this time. Okay. Um, so I definitely like to see Ace-10 open sometimes at least. At least check out who you're playing against. And maybe maybe your opponents are not particularly good and you can adjust a little bit. Uh, Queen-Deuce, yeah, sure. Why not check behind with, uh, against the limp? Your hand's pretty good here. I mean, you have a Queen-High flush draw. You have a Vector straight draw. Uh, the Deuce is also good to have in general here. So I actually don't, wouldn't mind seeing you stab. Now, generally, when people check these monotone boards, I mean, it's not like you can go nuts, right? If we had a big suited hand, we'd probably raise preflop. So, uh, at the same time, he limped and you saw he snap checked. I mean, he looks quite weak to me. So, if you pressure these guys, I'm sure they will fold. But I don't hate your check. And now he quickly pots it. Call. That's not the worst card. Because you wouldn't expect Villain to bet two pair a set, right? So... Now, he's basically saying he's got the nut flush after snap checking the flop. I mean, who, who knows is possible. I would end up calling here. He can just have maybe the jack of diamonds sometimes, and he's just, you know, playing his hand quickly or maybe has a ridiculous hand. So it does look like he's got it, but we only need to want, win one out of three times, and we have the second nuts, basically. Okay, so he did have it. Fine. Happens sometimes. Uh, eight seven here. I would be careful because the guy doesn't have a full stack. Also, the big blind is very aggressive and doesn't have a full stack. So I would be careful three betting these suited connectors uh, too often. But you do get a fold. This king eight suited easy call on the big blind and on the turn definitely check. Both guys could have hit two pair or straight here. You've got a weak king, so easy check. And now villain bets here an easy call. Are we happy about it? No, but we got a call. And so when we call turn, we could consider a lead. Question is like, do we have more aces than our opponent? Probably not. Villain can easily have like aces or ace king or something like that. Ace nine or ace queen. So uh, do we have more flushes than our opponent? Eh, about the same. So no, I don't think we need to lead here. I mean, we can have some hands like Jack Nine of Clubs, right? Easy fold. I mean, we, we don't need to call there with worse than an ace. We have aces and we have flushes. And two easy raises here. In fact, three. 10 8 offsuit is a raise, too. It is the worst 10 will raise. I mean, against a good player, you can even fold, but against most guys, you could end up just raising. We seem to be checking range on 10, 9, 6, which is fine. Definitely like to see you check raise the flop. Again, we see this quick check behind, which tells me he's got like not that much, right? Maybe, maybe he hit pocket eights or something, but I don't think he's super strong. I wouldn't mind seeing a small bet here.
Um, on here on Queen ten five, we have a checking range. That's fine. I definitely like to see you take your time a little bit. I mean, when you snap check, it really looks to me like you've got exactly what you've got, right? Like a decent hand. So take your time a little bit more. Take your time. I mean, imagine you had like pocket tens, right? Do you want to bet always? Do you want to check raise sometimes? Check call. You want to think about that, right? So take your time. And against against his forty percent and a bit bet size, easy call. I definitely would have seen it like the, a bet here with the with the nines. Yes, I mean the eight. What he cold calls? Yes, he's got maybe pocket eights. Yes, he's got maybe some random other eights like ace eight or who knows. But it's not. I mean, you also have plenty of eights, right? Then you check the flop. You lost a bit of value. Now it's time to get it back. So it's definitely. I mean, it's a turn on which we're not betting super frequently. That's definitely true. I'll disregard the ace nine because I have no idea what happened. Let's see what uh, villain showed up with with the pocket nines. Um, I don't know what happened with the ace nine, but that doesn't look like a good call. Yeah, that doesn't look like a good call. But maybe I should just not say anything. Easy call with Jack-5 suited until Villain 3-bets, and obviously easy 3-bet with Aces. You could probably even 3-bet a little bit smaller to run 7 big blinds, but I don't hate it. This board is obviously not very good for you because Villain can have sets and straights and, you know, even have some gut shots and stuff like that. I wouldn't actually mind seeing you check behind here. I actually like that. Good play. So quick again, check again by villain. So we the decision here is do we bet small, do we bet big, or do we check? It's actually pretty close. <laughs> I think all three options make sense. A big bet uh, doesn't really make as much sense, right? You're looking to get check, check all by an ace potentially, and you, you have two of them in your hand. So, so then you're basically saying, I'm hoping to get like... You know, I'm hoping to bet into a set, but if if he's got a set, he's probably going to check raise the turn anyway. So then it doesn't really matter. So I'd like to see a small bet or even a you know a check. The nice thing about checking would be that if villain has jack ten, he's absolutely dead, assuming he doesn't have spades. Yeah, do I, I don't like this bet size too much. Although uh, king jack, I, we we would open. There's plenty of guys I know who play quite high stakes who wouldn't have played that hand right. Ten eight five is a good board for the big blinds. I mean, you've get you're gonna hit tens and eights and fives as well, right? We saw you open ten eight offsuit before, but villain is also gonna have a lot of pairs and straight draws and over cards, so you have to be careful here. A uh, pretty close spot here, given the fact that he bets so so small. I think we should still fold. We can still continue with hands like ace nine, ace seven. We should check raise very aggressively here, but not with this hand. I think jack raising would be too aggressive. Okay, definitely showing some heart. And what do I know? You got the win. Uh, King eight with the high rake again. I would fold, but I can't blame you for calling. And again, we see. So this really has been a trend, right? We see another board where a lot of people can just bet range. Pi would probably bet this board like 90 plus percent of the time again. And again, we see a check behind. So I'd like to see you attack more. I'm not saying you should necessarily attack here, but you're not really applying enough pressure to these uh, these players. The 10 is a pretty good card for him. He's going to check back pocket 10s or jack 10 or hands like ace king quite a bit. King queen, three bit and call. I don't mind this block bet on the river. Okay, that's fine. And I wouldn't mind, as I said, I wouldn't mind seeing you 3-bet here with King-Queen suited. Obviously, this is a really good board for you. Um, we are 250 big blinds deep, which means that he's going to never 4-bet Ace-King off suit. Or not never, but um, he's not going to often 4-bet Ace-King off suit. Maybe not even suited. 
maybe not even pocket king so it's not a i mean you obviously have all the good hands here but he's gonna be quite strong so actually would uh, wouldn't mind if you started having a checking ranger on a board like this and include a hand like this and obviously check stronger hands too at the same time i wouldn't hate if you bet range one third but i'm pretty sure that's not what a solver would suggest okay and so this is a tell right i assume you bet third part range so you've got ace king aces kings ace queen suited and all the good stuff and villain just min raises you so um he should be quite scared on this board yet he min raised you so that that to me is a pretty significant tell that he just got something right so i mean you're saying hey i've got all the nuts and you've got some of them and he just min raises into you so it really looks to me like he's got a hand like ace king right it's like he doesn't want to go all in quite yet just all he doesn't want to go all in just yet but he seems to be having something i actually wouldn't mind seeing a tight fold here And here with Ace King, easy four bet. So maybe he min raised a ridiculous hand, but if he now bets, we just fold. And he bets 70% pot, easy fold. Well, 68, 67 point something percent, easy fold. We get it in against <laughs> the pocket fives guy must be pretty happy actually getting it in against the same hand so obviously that fi pocket fives get in is way too light but you know he happened to get it in like a dream not looking good no bts run good today well definitely some today but not on this hand okay happens so ace 10 five ace 10 three i'm sorry you can go both ways you can bet range one third you can bet bigger i'm fine with you betting range one third um five do suited i'm not sure we should open against uh, a maniac i mean you claim he's a maniac so i don't want to play five high against a maniac too much too often especially not, not when i've got a deuce kicker And we've got absolutely nothing. We've got no pair, no draw, no blockers, no reverse blockers, no triple merge, man Berkey nonsense. We've got nothing. Just just check, right? And here on this river, I mean, we could have checked the king of hearts, right? Or the jack of hearts easily. So I'd like to see you bluff here. Uh, 997. We, we end up three betting. Okay, fine play. We, and this is a kind of a close spot. I wouldn't end up I wouldn't hate if you bet range. I mean the nine, how good is it for him? He's gonna have sevens, he's gonna have maybe nine eight, maybe ten nine, but not so many nines. I'd like to see a bet. And I don't like this bet size too much with the five deuce. I think we should be betting a bit larger. We're representing mostly the king of hearts, the jack of hearts, maybe the ten of hearts. An easy fold of King Jack. I like the fact that the villain sh uh, that our hero showed us a session in which he's not just you know destroying everybody in every spot. He's actually in a, in a lot of really annoying, ugly spots, and that's I mean, obviously that takes a little bit of courage, so that's good. Also makes me look worse because it looks like I'm losing these hands, right? But as you can tell, a lot of these spots are just ugly, and you know it's about losing the minimum rather than you know winning the most. Obviously, we got that kings against eight deuce offsuit gift, right? But, I mean, we see that king queen suited and we get min raise. I mean, how often does that happen for somebody to raise on that board? Almost never, right? So, we're just getting a bit unlucky. <clears throat> Ace nine suited, sometimes three bet, sometimes call. I do suspect you're going to call. And as I say, that he three bets. So we three bet ace queen cutter versus middle position okay fine and we get two callers so when they both call tells me they have hands like nines tens jacks queens ace king ten nine suited king queen suited that type of stuff so i actually wouldn't mind if you just gave up here now this wouldn't be the worst triple barreling hand but at the same time keep it simple against recreational players triple barrel blocker bets against fish can work but not that uh, well. And you see a lot of these guys just fast play all their good hands, right? We're seeing a lot of like min raising on the flop.
King Queen Jack is like a bittersweet flop. I mean, the King of Hearts looks so good, but then the Queen and Jack kind of hurt us. Let's see what we do. I wouldn't mind if you bet small. Okay, Ace Jack suited and Ace Queen suited are not the worst hands to show up with there. Nice play, Ace King easy three bet, especially if you claim this guy is it's maniacal. We'll finish this hand and then do a few questions. Oh, wow, okay. The universe wants me to answer questions. Let's see. How good is Alec Torelli? Um, the only hand I've ever seen uh, from him is that pocket jack hand where Doug Polk 3-bet 8-6 suited. So that was, uh, you know, questionable play. But other than that, he's probably like a, you know, a long-term pro who does quite well. Let's see. Opinion on BBZ playing fast fold 500 zoom. I don't know who BBZ is. Let's see. Okay, Fubar, thanks for the feedback. I'll try and keep my mic about two inches away from my face. Let's see. Obviously, there's no guarantee. Da 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 da. Uh, still have to do. All right. So basically, people are argue, arguing about the pros and cons of being in a CFP. Uh, the numbers mentioned are not necessarily correct. If you want to be a student, you should just sign an application, like just uh, fill out an application form, and then we see what we can do, right? So the percentage would be different for every single person because it depends on the stakes you play. I mean, obviously, if you play higher stakes, you you pay significantly less in terms of percentage. So it really depends on uh, on on the volume you play and the stakes and the sites and all, all that type of stuff. So yeah. So I would just say, even if you're in doubt, just send us an application, and then you can uh, we'll see, right? You can always say, okay, I don't like the uh, the the details, or I do like them. <clears throat> What's up, Kates? After an F1 car, will you try learn to drive a plane? Well, I would fly a plane, not drive it uh, twice cool day, but no. Um, I'm, a, I'm a land animal. I like going fast on land. I'm not really uh, an altitude animal. I'm not really a bird. I also don't like going underwater too much. Is Doug Pole good for the game? Um, probably yes. What about Negranu? Yes. What do you think about people making courses for poker when they don't even beat the games themselves and they just make one tournament to uh, deceive their viewers. Also, what do you think about people like Jamie Staples who pretend they beat the games, etc. All their sponsorship Twitch seemed like borderline fraud. Um, well, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so... I believe how they do it is they use relative terms, right? If you say I'm a good player, like, what does good player mean? The, the, if you say, okay, I've made a million dollars. If you have not made a million dollars, that's a lie, right? And that's fraud. But if you say I'm a good player, well, what does that mean, right? There, there is no, there is no classification for what makes a good player. So yeah, of course they are. They brag a bit. They say things. You know, they basically, they exaggerate a bit to make themselves look good. So um, people making courses when they don't beat the game, I think most people who do make, who have made courses like Duca, Doug Polk, whatever. They're good players who beat the games. <laughs> Myself, <clears throat> so yeah. I had a pretty bad downswing last week, but it's actually been going pretty, going pretty well in the last few days. Uh, very well, in fact. So yeah, if if you may, if you're a coach or you you produce content and you're not a winning player, you should not pretend like you are, right? That's why I always post my uh, my graphs on two plus two. I've posted many many big winning graphs, but I've also posted losing graphs, right? I've posted my my 2018. I had an amazing year. I won 1.3 million dollars. But the year after, I had a really shitty year and I won 80k, which is still, of course, an amazing amount of money, but uh, very disappointing compared to the other year, right? So I, I make sure to post my winners, but also my losers. Um, and also, you know, just post losing hands, not just hands where I call bottom pair and look good, right? I also post hands where I call and lose. Can you stream some NL2? Um, of course I could, but I'm not sure people would like it too much. 
All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I feel kind of bad because we've got 250 viewers, which is really awesome. That's exactly what we asked for. Uh, but we've been going for... We've been going for an hour and 40 minutes, 50 minutes now, and I have to coach again in 10 minutes. I basically did an hour and 30 minutes, 10 minutes for food, and now I'm doing this, and 10 minutes I have to coach again. So I need to clear my head first. So I appreciate all the talk. We're going to do a part two of this uh, probably Tuesday, right? Why not? So I'm going to see you guys on Tuesday. I'm also going to be inviting Gazzy B probably for next week. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, right. stay tuned and... Uh, we'll uh, we'll see each other soon. Yes, my credit card was canceled. It was nothing. Uh, it was had nothing to do with me. It's just they they try to issue me a new card, but they send it to my old apartment. So obviously I have no access to that. So yeah, thanks for joining. Next week, six p.m. and we'll be uh, continuing with the footage. If you want to be a student, you can sign up at the CFP for the CFP. Uh, we have a we have a great lab for people who don't want to be committed to the CFP but still want to learn. We've got uh, my ultimate course, which is uh, way more advanced, but also a ton of content. 